ADO interview with Sarah Montague. You are balancing serious allegations, duty of care, privacy issues and legitimate public interest. And how do you navigate that fairly, calmly and do due diligence? It is a very difficult and complex situation. Tuesday was the fourth day in a row that TV news bulletins and the BBC News website had led on the story. Not only was the presenter's name not in the public arena, but few other facts were available either. The precise nature of the complaint, the presenter's response, or what BBC management knew when. Given that paucity of information, of great concern to the BBC, but surely, as he cannot be named until further investigations are undertaken, this should be given less prominence than other news about the economy, the effects of climate change and the war in Ukraine. And David Robinson suggested, report the facts when they are available and stop adding to the frenzy around who it is. Who it was, was revealed on Wednesday's News at Six, as culture editor Katie Russell described. This will come as a huge shock to viewers. Uh, we've had a statement within the last few minutes from Vicky Flynn, who is the wife of Hugh Edwards, um, who named him and said about her husband that he was suffering from serious mental health issues and is now receiving inpatient hospital care. Later that evening, other BBC News outlets aired new allegations about Hugh Edwards and the continued coverage that evening prompted two viewers to send us their thoughts. You covered him for 18 minutes before I turned off. And he has just asked for privacy. And it is through his wife who said he's in hospital care. He's obviously at a really low point to even have to receive at your lowest point, want to be nationally covered for hours on end about the state of your mental health. It seems that whenever the BBC covers a situation involving either the corporation or one of its own, there's a tendency to go into overdrive, often with speculative journalism. Matters that should be addressed internally are aired on the news. On Wednesday night, the Metropolitan Police stated there was no criminal and asked for privacy, but the BBC News coverage on this story was non-stop. Hugh Edwards and his family must feel hounded by the very corporation that employs him and by some of his colleagues. By Thursday, the story had dropped out of the BBC's headlines and some compliments were coming in for the coverage, such as this from Matthew Brown. In what must have been an awful week for all at BBC News, I want to praise the news team for the way they have reported on the Hugh Edwards story. It must have been extremely difficult to report on their colleague, but they have demonstrated their commitment and dedication to transparency, even when reporting on itself. And Rachel Gunn was one of a number of viewers expressing their sympathy for Hugh Edwards. After everything that's happened and he's ended up in hospital, I just feel so sorry for him. I'm very sad about the whole situation. Um, I'm, I'm a real believer that he, he does have a private life and that we, we didn't really need to know all of this about him. He's, he's a brilliant presenter. So I just wanted to, to say that um, I, I hope Hugh is soon going to be a better and uh, my, my best wishes to him and his family. Last week, the 75th anniversary of the National Health Service was marked by a good deal of media coverage and some celebratory events, including a special ceremony at Westminster Abbey, exemplifying how for some the NHS is treated as something of a religion. The BBC's health editor, Hugh Pym, provided this analysis on the News at Six. Including that service at Westminster Abbey with political and health leaders and NHS staff. But it comes at a time of intense debate about the future of the health service with increasing strain on the front line and mounting frustration for patients. The BBC's contribution to the anniversary included a special edition of Newsnight, which included a range of views on the NHS and culminated in a choir singing Happy Birthday. But that decision was greeted with ridicule in some quarters, with the former BBC presenter Andrew Neil tweeting, BBC Newsnight goes full-on Pyongyang. 
along with the NHS. Who at Broadcasting House really thought this a good idea? Journalist George Eaton added, Britons currently have the worst access to health care in Europe. The NHS and the government need journalistic scrutiny, not quasi-religious indulgence. But James Dolman couldn't see a problem. Our greatest achievement and most precious possession. Why shouldn't we celebrate it? For their part, Newsnight told us. The programme included full analysis of the challenges faced by the NHS and a range of contributions, including from some who believe in a greater role for the private sector in healthcare. Despite reporting on these challenges, the programme also highlighted the residual overall high levels of public support for the NHS from the British public, and in that context included a short sequence with a local children's choir to mark the anniversary of its founding. More generally, some viewers have told us of their concern that the BBC seems reluctant to report on the faults and problems in the NHS. Here's the doctor and author, Rachel Clark. Where is your news coverage, BBC News? Your is imploding here, now, with devastating consequences. Scott Miller, though, complained of too much negativity. BBC coverage is typical, with grim warnings from unnamed think tanks that the NHS cannot survive without radical change. Meanwhile, Sam Data was a satisfied customer last week. Great to see all the BBC live coverage of the amazing things the NHS does on its 75th birthday. Well, let's speak to the health editor for BBC News, Hugh Pym. Thank you for coming to the Newswatch studio. The birthday cake, the singing, some viewers feel that that on the news, a quasi-religious... ..and you should be examining them more. Is that a fair criticism? Well, that piece uh, used a clip uh, from which I did on the day. Yes, we did start with the Westminster Abbey service. I should say it had 1,500 NHS staff there, as well as all the main political parties, and there was royal representation as well. So it was you know, quite an important moment to at least note. Uh, but I did say pretty quickly it comes at a time of intense strain on the service and services under real pressure. So I suppose you need to combine both thoughts. It is a, a moment, 75th anniversary, and there is still quite a lot of pride in the service founded in 1948, providing free at the point of use healthcare, making a massive difference to people's lives, reflecting on that, but certainly looking to the future with all the huge... Yeah. Equally, there are other viewers, you won't be surprised to hear, who feel the BBC is far too negative about the NHS. How would you answer them? Well, I think the comments we've heard are we're not being critical enough or we're being too critical. And I think we need to reflect on those, but it shows there are differing views. There were two reports from think tanks in the run-up to the anniversary and on the day itself, the main health think tanks, which broadly concluded that... And, and these, these think tanks are very much for the idea of an NHS, that, uh, that it was in a critical situation. Uh, services were under extreme pressure. It was underperforming. on outcomes for, like heart attacks and strokes, but that there was rock-solid support for it. So what do we do from here? So I suppose we're, we're just noting comment out there, and we hear a lot from staff on the front line how frustrated they are, how difficult they're finding things, with trying to look at positive long-term solutions and, and the debates that are going on at the moment. It feels like the NHS has been a political football for, certainly for the last 30 years of my entire journalistic career, it's always been. And I wonder if, if from your point of view, things feel particularly... ...reflect differing sides of the debate. There are some people who feel very strongly this model is not working. We need something different. We've seen these huge queues uh, in A&E and we've seen these long waiting lists. We've seen not very good outcomes for certain health conditions, including cancer compared to other countries. We need to change this with another side of the debate, well, what do we want to do? Let's look at some of the positive things that the NHS is doing. Again, in the week that we had the anniversary, uh, or within days of it, we reported a really positive initiative. Of it, We reported a really positive initiative involving paramedics and hospital staff in North East London, working together with consultants talking from the hospital on a phone or video link to the paramedics about keeping people out of hospital. And we were, were ready to report that as some initiative on the grassroots level which is being done to try and improve things. Hugh Pym, thank you so much. Thank you.
Thank you for all your comments this week. If your opinions about what you see or hear on BBC News, on TV, radio, online and social media, email newswatch at bbc.co.uk or you can find us on Twitter at Newswatch BBC. You can call us on 0370 010 6676 and do have a look at previous interviews on our website bbc.co.uk slash newswatch. That's all from us. Now we're off air for a few weeks but we will be back at the different looking studio and asking BBC bosses to come on and respond to your questions. Until then, goodbye. This time